When you're studying for a check ride, any check ride really, you notice that there are about as many ways to memorize VFR weather minimums in various airspace as there are types of airspace to begin with. The problem with all these novel approaches is that one way or the other, you're forced to commit certain things to memory. There's no magic pill to understanding VFR weather minimums, but if we can limit what we have to rely on by just hard rote memorization, the job can be easier. Let's break it down as simply as we can, remembering that we'll still have to rely on old school memorization just a bit. The first thing to memorize is what I'll call the plain vanilla VFR weather minimums. There's a visibility requirement, three statute miles or more, and a cloud clearance requirement, at least 500 feet below, 1,000 feet above, and 2,000 feet horizontally separated. You often hear this abbreviated as 3512. This requirement should be memorized, but you'll use it enough that unlike minimums in some other types of airspace, you should have no trouble locking it into long-term memory. Some people like the memory aid of three Cessna 152s flying in formation, 3152 then. Just make sure you're getting the order correct. The separation below clouds can be less than the separation above them. Why is that? Departing aircraft, especially airliners, typically fly faster than arriving aircraft. If you're flying above a cloud layer, you'll have less time to see and avoid a faster moving departing aircraft. So you should be further above the clouds, at least a thousand feet, than the 500 feet you need below them. When you're thinking about airspace minimums, you can fall back on the 3512 model. It applies in many cases. Where does it not apply? Class A airspace is easy. You can't fly up there without an IFR clearance anyways, so there are no VFR minimums. Class Bravo could be 3512, but there's an important characteristic of Bravo airspace distinguishing it from others. All aircraft, no matter what, operate in Bravo with a clearance. So all aircraft are being actively worked by radar control who issues instructions to help keep them separated. Flying VFR, we still need to practice see and avoid, but with a lifeguard on duty, so to speak, we don't need to worry about a big airliner popping out of the clouds at us, so we just need to stay clear of the clouds. We do still need the three statute mile of visibility here though. For the purposes of most general aviation, 3512 will apply to all other controlled airspace. Controlled airspace is A through E, so this is class C, D, and E. Why do I say most general aviation? Because there's an exception to this rule above 10,000 feet, which most of us don't often get up into. Above 10,000 feet, airspeed restrictions go away. Big airliners will be flying fast subsonic speeds here. Again, with faster aircraft, the amount of time you have to see and avoid is smaller, so your visibility and cloud clearance requirements are stricter. Instead of our plain vanilla 3512, it's now 5111. Five statute mile visibility, 1,000 feet below, 1,000 feet above, and one statute mile horizontal separation from clouds. This is our second memory item then, 5111. Some people use the aid F-111, 5111, the combat aircraft to distinguish from the slower three Cessna 152s down below 10,000 feet. Now, let's talk about Class G airspace. This is where it gets complicated, but let's simplify it by thinking about the Class G airspace where we do almost all our flying, close to the ground, not above 10,000 MSL, like the traffic pattern at our home airport. Class G is non-controlled airspace and requirements are relaxed. Legally, we just need to stay out of the clouds and keep at least one statute mile of visibility. In very rare cases, we're in Class G above 1200 AGL and that airspace is getting rarer and rarer. The requirements there are one statute mile visibility with 512. At night, in G, it's plain vanilla 3512. So let's go through what things we have to commit to memory. First, it's our plain vanilla 3512. You'll be using this so often that it shouldn't be tough to remember, but you can use the 3152's aid. Where does this apply? It's in C, D, E, and G airspace with some exceptions. What are those exceptions? First, above 10,000 feet, the minimums are 5111. This could be our second memory item. Next, the most common type of G flying is in the pattern in the day, where we get the biggest break, one mile and clear of clouds. We get a smaller break above 1200 AGL on the day, which again is rare. This is one 512, which could be our third memory item. There's no break at night for either E or G, it's 3512. Class B is a bit more relaxed because everyone's talking to the controller, 
three miles and clearer clouds, and of course, class A is IFR only. So commit the three memory items, plain vanilla 3512, above 10,000 feet 5111, and rare G, above 1200 AGL, 1512. Your common class G in the pattern almost shouldn't be a memory aid. You just need to stay out of the clouds with very, very small visibility minimums, one statute mile. When determining where plain vanilla applies, think about if a certain class of airspace will be more or less relaxed than it. Class B and G are more relaxed, while flight above 10,000 is less relaxed. Go through this little exercise a few times. Hopefully the combination of light rote memorization with common sense logic will allow you to remember these numbers at least up until your next check ride. VFR weather minimums are required knowledge items on most check rides, not just private, so make sure you're ready no matter what you're studying for by checking out Flight Insight Ground Schools at the link here or in the description today.